On May 19th, John Dew of Edinburgh officially launched Pipe Suites, a digital collection of his 11 original suites specifically for Highland Pipers and pipe bands. Still in his 20s, Dew is already an accomplished composer. With a degree in composition from the Royal Conservatoire in Glasgow, in 2020 he published Pipe Tunes, his first collection including 80 original pieces that accompanied his EP recording, The High Bridge. In 2021, he brought out his first full-length recording, Mackerel Sky, and that same year was nominated in the Best Up-and-Coming Artist category at the Scots Trad Music Awards. Originally from Creef, Scotland, he's an accomplished competitive piper, rising quickly up the solo ranks, and he's been a member of the Grade 1 Inverarian District Pipe Band for many years, the band playing his works, including, most prominently, the strings arrangement in John Cunningham's A Night in That Land the feature and title piece in the band's 2022 Pre-Worlds concert. He's a professional composer far beyond piping, working to create scores for film and television in orchestral and other arrangements. We checked in with John Dew to discuss his new collection and his thoughts on the role of the suite as a performance and, possibly, the competition genre in piping and pipe bands. May 22nd. 2023 and we're here with John Dew coming to us from Edinburgh and John has just launched Pipe Suites, a collection, a digital collection of 11 suites uh, in that genre specifically for the Highland Bagpipe. Uh, John, thanks a lot for uh, for taking the time today. Thank you for uh, inviting me on. Yeah, you bet. Uh, so, you know, maybe talk, let's just talk about the 11 suites, just, uh, you know, fairly briefly. Uh, you know, are these uh, are these suitable for pipe bands, really? Did you aim all 11 of these specifically for pipe bands? I, I guess so, yeah. I think I think in the back of my mind, it was I was picturing it as uh, a pipe band type thing. But, you know, you could use it for small pipes or border pipes. Uh, it is for Scottish pipes, really. Um, so... You know, that's where people can get creative. They don't necessarily have to use it for pipe bands. It could be some sort of other ensemble or you can add other instruments or whatever. Um, and that's why I didn't call it pipe band suites, but they're just kind of suites. Um, you know, if you take Dougie Campbell's Learning to Fly, that was done on C small pipes. And it's just like a really nice piece of music. But then you take the Trinity Suite, the other one that he did, and that was played by Inverary and District and Ascension, uh, and that was for a pipe band. Um, so, yeah, in the back of my mind, it was for pipe bands uh, initially, but um, that is not exclusively for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, now, now you have a background in music, uh, you know, obviously uh, piping, but, you know, music broadly. Uh, you've got a degree from the Royal Conservatoire in Glasgow. Uh, so you're an accomplished musician, uh, you know, working with other instruments and understanding music theory in, in depth. So but so for these these compositions of yours, uh, does a band really have to have that kind of in-depth knowledge uh, beyond traditional Highland pipe music uh, to play these pieces? Well, not really, but it does, it would help um, because the pieces use concepts of music that aren't really found in everyday bagpipe music, you know, like uh, a 4 4 march will have one harmony line that will be homophonic, which means each note is harmonized by another note. Um, and that's kind of almost your everyday pipe band stuff. The, the stuff that's in the, in the book, it's not everyday stuff. You know, there's a lot of clashes but they're not actually clashes, they're uh, either suspensions or added notes or open chords, which, uh, you know, are take the idea of dissonance and resolve the dissonance to form consonants. It's things like that and different textures, you know, some of them explore uh, heterophony, some of them explore polyphony, some of them are, um, do just have normal uh, melody dominated uh, homophony. And it, it does help to have those um, kind of that kind of background, but at the same time, that's why I included a demo track, so you can hear how the piece goes, and you can kind of hear how each line works with each other, and you've got an idea of how the piece goes, and from that you can go, well, if I can hear it, I don't necessarily need to understand it the same way that it was conceived, um, and I can just play it because I'm hearing it and just doing it like that, um, you know. Uh, so I, 
don't think you have to have that in-depth knowledge, but it, it doesn't doesn't hurt to have that. Um, and again, the whole point of the, the demo track, it's not a complete finished article in terms of, you know, performance uh, or an album. It's a demo track. It's meant to be an idea of how it works. And if you can hear that, it allows you to, allows like people who are trying to learn to hear it fully and understand it before, rather than kind of like trying it, not really getting it, and then immediately resorting to, I don't get it, that doesn't work. It's like, well, of course it works. Like, mm -hmm. um, I made a demo track of it. So if you do find these weird things, have a listen and see how it's meant to sound kind of thing. And you don't necessarily need to have all these different concepts of music yeah there, just to, that's, to play them that's interesting what we know about uh you know if you go back to one of the original you might call it a sweet uh journey to sky uh by you know jazz musician uh donald thompson uh i think their initial reaction uh by the band uh was you know this isn't going to work they didn't understand it uh there was a, mm -hmm. a faction of the band way back in the 80s that wanted to throw it out just because couldn't couldn't quite get it uh so that's that's great so um, so bands will really be able to hear uh, that uh, maybe some of that dissonance that sounds foreign to their ear is actually correct, uh, or the intention of the piece. Um, so, but the the suite is a musical genre um, for pipe bands. Does it or will it have a place uh, in uh, in with pipe bands beyond the concert stage, uh, possibly in, in competition. Uh, could, is that a possibility? I'd like to think so. And I often think there should be an opportunity for a sweet competition, similar to the kind of bag ad contest you get in Lorien. And something that I kind of thought about uh, was I think it'd be cool to have like an indoor mini band contest where you do just perform a suite. It's kind of similar to the international quartets but yeah, make it a mini band and, you know, you play a suite, you know, whether that's, um, you know, Tiernan Og or um, Steam Trims Malik or Beaches of Harris, that kind of thing. I think that would be a really cool concept. And you could even have two categories like accompanied and unaccompanied where you just have the one band and then, and then you go, you know, if you take Tiernan Og, it's got a backing track to it um, like almost kind of like an electronic form. Uh, and you could have the, those two categories. So that was kind of an idea I had in my mind. And the Scottish Schools contest, freestyle contest, is doing wonderful things for promoting those kind of things because uh, you don't necessarily need to have, you know, the kind of like rock solid, steady blowing thing without exploring good music. Um, and, and so there's a lot of um, bands that we made it, like, juvenile bands that are up and coming or whatever that are producing some really good pieces of music. Uh, as pipe band contests go, I can't see a suite as we see them today, you know, like slow, fast, slow again or whatever. Can't really see that today being used in the same format that we would use a medley or put in a medley contest, for example. Uh, you could, however, mould sweet into the medley format that we know today um but yeah it, you could run the danger of having zero musical contrast which is essentially what musical storytelling is is having all these different contrasts so mm -hmm. i think yes but yeah i think i think it does i just think in order for it to be successful it would take uh a lot of musical thought a lot of like kind of process as to how we're gonna introduce this into the competition but basically I, i'd like to think that we could have suites involved yeah i would uh, would imagine uh it would take a lot of courage uh to do that for a band to step out as a few bands have tried in the past to think of the toronto police uh mm -hmm. you know 15 years ago or 20 years ago or whenever it was uh trying to do that uh and uh, not not being necessarily successful in that um and then, you know, the 78th Fraser Highlanders uh, were about to do that uh, way back in the early 90s with the Megantic Outlaw and, and decided against it. Um, so do you think, you know, that is, is that, do we have to break, would it have to be, okay, everybody is going to do this uh, sort of thing? Or is it going to take uh, that kind of courageousness, uh, courage to step out, uh, to stick their neck out and and play a sweet, a sweet, a cohesive piece of music uh, in a medley contest. 
Um, what, what do you think? Is it going to prevent yeah. things? I think, I think it. I think it could. Um, I think the main thing that's preventing. Well, firstly, one could argue that a medley is a cohesive suite, as a medley in a suite. Well, a medley and a suite are, in many ways, the same thing. If you take the Nutcracker suite, that's individual pieces. If you take the Bach cello suite, they are individual dances, which is technically what a suite is. But then, John Williams did a Prisoner of Azkaban soundtrack suite, and that was continuous straight through, uh, like a medley. Um, so, you know, and, and there's times if you take like uh, a lot of bands are reprising slow airs and or re quoting other things, that, that kind of thing. And I think, um, you know, the, the line can be blurred, but ultimately, the, the, what, what happens in, in bands is, as we're all kind of aware, is uh, whoever wins, that winning formula is then copied. And a good example of that is the sheepskin bag, right? So, um, you know, there were plenty of bands that weren't playing sheepskin bags and then bands, the top bands were able to produce a good sound. And now I don't think there's a grade one band that I'm aware of that doesn't play sheepskin. Um, and so what, what happens is if that's the winning formula, it gets copied. And I think, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's a competition. We are, as pipe banders, we are there to win. And so a lot of bands would rather Play it safe isn't the right word, but um, keep to within the confines uh, of what what is expected, shall we say? And uh, yeah, it would take it would take a lot of courage to put something like that out. And I think again, it, with the right musical mind, they'd be able to go right. If we go to the extremely bizarre, and we go and we take what we know already and try and find a happy medium, that would be a good place to start. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't think anyone wants to take a gamble um, on the Day of the Worlds and miss out on being crowned the world champion just because. Yeah, yeah, for want sure. To try something musical, you know. Yeah, I think it's a tricky one. Yeah, it's very tricky. It's uh, you know, I think we described uh, that Toronto Police example as is them falling on their sword basically for for musical purposes uh to try to make a statement uh even though the the band wasn't uh didn't wasn't realistically looking at uh, winning a world championship um yeah. they did have a lot of courage doing that but thinking mm -hmm. you know possibly one of the contenders uh you know the the regular top four top six uh sorts of bands of the world uh making that kind of musical statement and almost yeah. daring the judges to uh not to reward them if it's done really well interesting yeah yeah i think it is yeah i think it can be and i think well i think a lot of the the reason why some of the top grade one bands are at the top of what they are is because they're good at what they do and um for me personally like when we get a new medley out i love having all those like kind of the small jigs and, sm and the small space and reels i think and uh i think as a pipe band player you know, we've got two MSRs that we learn. One of them is the run, um, and that's an eight-part just a brilliant piece of music. But it can be a little bit easier if our medley is made up of these uh, little bit, little small tunes, if you like. So I think sometimes, you know, if you've got a great big cohesive piece of music, it can be quite overwhelming. It could be overwhelming to learn um, and kind of to to digest and to kind of play play through it. Um, and, and I think, you know, some people prefer just having all these small tunes and just makes it a little bit, that little bit easier to, to digest. Also, a lot of uh, pipe band creators, or not creative, but the creative people in there, they like to come up with their own style of harmonies or arrangements and stuff. And if you do take, if they do kind of get given a score, let's say, I mean, they could obviously come up with it, but if someone else had come up with it, the person who's uh, unofficially or officially the musical director is like, all right, well, that's my kind of little part of the band, my little job in the band gone, you know, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think, I think for it to kind of be almost taken seriously, it's kind of a wee bit like the solos in that if someone plays a new tune, you know how best to put this, but, um, it's kind of like you almost have to prove yourself by if you want to play the new tunes you almost have to prove yourself by saying well i know how well i can do the canon repertoire 
And so I think it is those top uh, players, when they play in YouTube, uh, it will get taken more seriously because they've got the track record to prove. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it uh, seems like you know then uh, you know very good players uh, or or people not necessarily de- vying for a prize. If they do it, they're just seen as being cheeky, uh, mm-hmm. and it doesn't help much. Um, so it's an interesting time, uh, really, for for piping for pipe bands. Uh, you know, musically, um, you know, I guess you know what you're talking about is incremental steps. Uh, you know, forward when it comes to competitive pipe bands and uh, see see where things take us um but you know you've taken a taken a big step forward uh with this collection john uh you know with 11 full suites uh you know uh original uh by you uh for for pipers for pipe bands and uh, it's an exciting uh breakthrough for uh for piping so looking forward to uh to it being more widespread and maybe catching on more so as a genre uh in in our musical canon yeah i hope so too because uh there's some brilliant pieces out there that no one knows about not not by me by like other by other people and uh yeah. you hear them and they're just like harmonious magic and you're just like well, why do people not know enough about this you know yeah well it'll take time and it's an exciting time so i uh, will uh, look forward to seeing what's next so thanks john i really appreciate the time you've taken and uh, good luck with the book yeah, well, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here it is, the USB, digital USB. And uh, it is available from my website, John, www.johnd-composition.com forward slash shop. Excellent. All right, John, thanks, thanks again. Take Thank care. you.